men are focused on their survival and their existence in every single social, social structure that has ever been created every single economic system has always been centered around making a perfect world for a man because in nature the male does not get easy access to women he does not get easy access to life sustenance uh, life sustaining materials so the creations of the modern day relationship was centered around giving men access to all of the things that he needs to sustain his life, primarily a woman. This hurts the woman. And when you hurt the woman, you hurt life because woman represents life. The feminine is the creative, right? The feminine is the nurturer and sustainer of life. So when you take her life away and give it to a man, and create the idea of a man-woman relationship, what you end up with is actually a parasite-host relationship. And if any woman is listening, and if you're honest with yourself, you know that's the truth. And we're trying to force something that does not make sense. Happiness will be sucked out of you if you continue to go in this delusional setup that is against nature. Insight and Awareness Spiritual Explorer Soul Intuitive, Emotional and Spiritual Mentor and Award-winning Author Lorraine Nylon Welcome Explorers. Today we have a special guest, Priscilla, and she is a queen maker and we're going to ask her all about that. And I'm very interested because I think today people are going to get some information that they need, especially the women and also the men. She is a new world social reformer. And to me, what that means is she's trying to pull up the underbelly of how we're living and present it to us so that we can make informed choices. And she specializes in psychology human behavior and social structures and is the author of two books the five components of love and the game 41 shades of men the pursuit to seduce and use you thank you for being part of the show today i really appreciate you spending some time with me thank you so much for having me <laughs> <laughs> I'm also interested, you've got a very interesting background as far as that you were also an army veteran, which gives you insight into the male mind and yes. how, and even how we structure things in our living relationships. Yes. Yeah. So why would anyone want to read your, the game, 41 Shades of Men? Well, why is it an important book for people to read? Well, specifically for women, um, I think women are on the losing end in several relationship structures, whether it be marriage, boyfriend, girlfriend, platonic. Women find themselves giving practically all they have with receiving little to nothing in return. And they have a lot of complaints about why things are not going in a certain way. If women knew the nature of men and why men do what they do, they could understand why men come in their lives and they will then see why they are on the losing end. So um, men and women are very different. We are more different than we are alike. And if women understood those differences, they would move a lot differently. So the game 41 Shades of Men is about the reasons, the 41 different reasons why men come into women's lives and neither of those reasons is to actually love her. Yeah, and because you, you see that when we do, for women, when they do head towards relationships, you know, like I get people when it's all gone, as clients, when it's all gone pear-shaped, you know, it's gone upside down. Mm -hmm. And when you take them back, and I've done it myself, this is not meant as a judgment because I've lived it myself, mm -hmm. all those, you know, we call them red flags now, but all those moments where you're going, that doesn't feel right, that's mm -hmm. not fair, they all come, I always say, what, what was annoying you at the beginning of the relationship 
is going to really annoy you at the end of a relationship because it's not mm-hmm. changing. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. The, the thing is, is that women end up getting in relationships with men looking for something that men are not capable of giving them. Um, and most of what women are looking for are pieces of themselves um, that they are searching for in men. And those pieces of a woman is a reflection of a woman. So essentially, women are looking for women inside of men. And men are incapable of being women. And they are also incapable of that very important thing that women are looking for, which is love. You're not going to find that outside of yourself. But women are desperately believing that there is a male counterpart out there that is designed to complete them, which is a problem. <laughs> and it, and from what I've researched about you, you're not saying you're not anti-male. You're just saying to women that we need to look at our self-esteem and not ask the men to supply that to us, and then be very honest about what man you've got next to you or or who's knocking on your door? Essentially, yes. Um, What happens is the, the more you know, the more you see. And it's inevitable that that would happen. So women can deal with men if they want to. But if you're going to deal with men, you're going to deal with men how men are. And the things that women want out of men once they realize that they will be doing all the work themselves, supplying all of their own needs, they will then begin to ask the question, why is he in my life? Because the male is in the woman's life because he needs something from her. Once women realize that they're not going to get their primary needs from men, it begs the question, why is he there? (laughs) Why is he there? If you're going to do it by yourself, then why do you need a male partner? So if if women are afraid of being by themselves, then ignorance is bliss. But we all know that ignorance is the cause of all of the world's pain and suffering. So what you don't know will hurt you, contrary to the lies that have been told in the past, that what you don't know won't hurt you. What you don't know has actually destroyed you spiritually, mentally, emotionally, and it has destroyed the planet. So learning the nature of men is very critical because the entire world is under patriarchal rule. And we have all been forced under this rule. So if we don't, if If we don't learn who men are at their core and why they exist on the planet, we will continue to perpetuate the problems that we are complaining about and we are suffering from. It's interesting because I've had, you know, leading up to the conversation with you, I've asked women, you know, like, how do you see, what, what are you experiencing And a a good friend of mine summed it up and she said, um, we've gone from being hidden in the kitchen to being given all the jobs. She said, you know, like in her relationship, she said, I did everything. She said, but I'll give him one thing. He used to do the mechanics. If something went wrong with the car, that was the and um, occasionally mowed the lawn. And she said, other than that, I did absolutely everything. So she said, I feel, um, it was a funny conversation, but she actually, she said, I feel ripped off that I was told I could do it all and have someone supportive next to me helping each other. And she said, I just got all. (laughs) Mm -hmm. I got everything. I got to do everything. Because Um, the unfortunate reality, which women have not understood, is that men and women are not the same. We are fundamentally different. And the nature of a woman is production, producer, provider, protector. That's the nature of a woman. That's not the nature of a man. The nature of a man is consumer. That's his nature. And all of the duties that were to be shared were to be shared between women. Men don't do anything. They consume 
right? And so they get their own private uh, hen that lays the golden egg and they consume until that hen can't lay anymore and then they go look for another hen. That's the nature of a male all over the globe. And because of that, it has depleted the entire planet's resources, right? It has depleted women. Women's cortisol levels are through the roof. They are affected by autoimmune disease because of the continued stress by having a partner who places all of the work onto them. And women have been taught to not like other women and despise and compete against other women for a male. And this has caused great destruction, calamity, and everything all over the planet because women are not sharing the loads between themselves. A woman, a single woman is not a woman without a man. A single woman is a woman without a community support of women. And every, when you divide women up and you boggle them down with all of the house work, boggle them down with kids, then you separate women because now you don't have people sharing amongst themselves and dividing up duties. All of the women are boggled down with the duties of their individual household and the males do not help you. Just like, just like the uh, bees, the male bee, which is the drone, is not built to do the work that the female bees do. He doesn't have the parts. He's not capable. He doesn't have a stinger. He doesn't have the uh, pieces on his feet that are capable of carrying pollen. Like he's literally incapable, right? So the only thing that he can do is consume the food that the females bring to the hive, right? Until it's time for him to leave during the winter months uh, after mating season is over. So when you look in nature, the male's cap of what he's capable of doing is practically the same throughout nature. The, the human male is no different. So women have to change how they see the world. We've been sold. We've been sold wolf tickets as women. We have been sold the idea that your destiny is to get married and have children, that that's the apex. But in actuality, you as a woman were given dominion over the planet and your primary purpose on this planet is to find ways to add back to the planet and to support and nurture the planet with your gifts and talents. In order to be married or to be with a man, you have to severely stunt your growth. You have to pretend to be something that you're not. And that destroys everybody. Hmm. It's hard to get your head around. So so are you so do you think our relationship structures don't work at all? Correct. No, they don't. They are they're unnatural. Right. The idea of having every every man have a woman is unnatural. The structures that we live in today are created to make a perfect world for men. Men are focused on their survival and their existence in every single social social structure that has ever been created. Every single economic system has always been centered around making a perfect world for a man. Because in nature, the male does not get easy access to women. He does not get easy access to life sustenance, uh, life sustaining materials. So the creations of the modern day relationship was centered around giving men access to all of the things that he needs to sustain his life, primarily a woman. This hurts the woman. And when you hurt the woman, you hurt life because woman represents life. The feminine is the creative, right? The feminine is the nurturer and sustainer of life. So when you take her life away and give it to a man and create the idea of a man-woman relationship, what you end up with is actually a parasite-host relationship. 
And if any woman is listening, and if you're honest with yourself, you know that's the truth. And we're trying to force something that does not make sense. Happiness will be sucked out of you if you continue to go in this delusional setup that is against nature. Right. See, I I get the parasite host when you're with, um, say, a narcissist, for, you know, mm-hmm. and in either way, whether it's a, a female or a male who's a narcissist but in a relationship, mm-hmm. that you can, I, I can very much see the, the parasite host scenario. Mm-hmm. If, if we're not, if we haven't got this structure, what do you, what do you think the the evolved move is? Like, well, well, it's really not even evolution. What we find is evolution is actually going back to the way it was naturally supposed to be. The idea of evolution is what jacked up the planet to begin with, where we flipped it out of nature and flipped it up 180 degrees upside down. So now we're we're bec- we're moving into a state of consciousness that, oh, we messed up big time. Maybe nature does know more than we do. Maybe the animals are smarter than us. Maybe the trees and the plants and the water is smarter than us, right? So we have, as humans, we have a very superior, we have a superiority complex where we think we are better and we know better than Mother Nature, and we don't. So what would be evolved is our awareness to go back to the way Mother Nature set it up. Now, when you are with a man, see, nature is the path of least resistance. You don't have to, you don't have to force yourself to go to sleep when you're tired. You do have to force yourself to wake up before you're well rested right you have to force yourself to hold your bodily fluids when your body say you want to go that's discipline and going against nature is the hard thing so if it's hard to maintain that means it's not natural one thing that's hard to maintain is the idea of monogamy You can rest assured that if a man has the opportunity to get with another woman, he will, because that's natural. That's the path of least resistance. But we're trying to force a relationship dynamic that doesn't work. You have to set up institution, laws, and social condemnation to force a woman to stay in a marriage that is depleting her. You have to tell her through religion that it's a sin to to get a divorce, even if she's being abused. That's anti-natural. To force women in relationships that do not work for them, to try to force a man to stay with one woman that he that he does not want to stay with. Because why? The male's biological nature is to pass his genes along across multiple hosts that he can, as many as he can. In this society, they have made it easy for men to have access to more women than they would in a completely natural environment. So because the male's being is based in scarcity because the male is always in scarcity mode no matter how much abundance appears to be around he's wired for scarcity he's wired for competition so he's wired for aggression well this is in direct opposition of women's nature right so when you force these two people together you inevitably end up with chaos because you end up with people who are going against their true self. They're forced to reduce themselves, to live up to an illusion. Their men absolutely need women to be codependent. 
because men need women in a way that women do not need men. And you know you don't need men the way that men need you because when you get into these marriages and these relationships, what is happening? The woman is doing all the work and he's not really helping you. But he's benefiting off of all of your labor. He's getting his clothes washed. Who is washing them? You're going to work just as much as he's going to work. You're doing all of the cooking. These are duties that you do to sustain your life. And he's not doing these. He has a free maid. Men's lives, their lifespan extends when they have a wife. Because it's the wife practically taking care of the man. If the man catches cancer, the divorce rate is like 2.9% for him. Men leave women when women yeah. are ill. Yeah. The, yeah. the number jumps us to 20%. So who needs who? The male needs her. The Bible doesn't say she that finds herself a husband finds herself a good thing. No, the Bible says he who finds a wife finds a good thing. So the whole dynamic is set up for men to use women to fulfill their needs. You are the need fulfiller. This destroys women. And it's just the way it is. So as long as women continue to believe in a dynamic that by common sense, goes totally against nature as long as women continue to live in fairy taleism they will abandon their true life purpose which is connected to mother earth they will abandon it and they will drain all of their life force energy on a black hole who's adding very little very little value to the planet very little Right. And, well, I, I stumble a little bit. Only, only a point I'd like to discuss with you is when, when I read people. So I'm reading people's energy, right? Mm -hmm. And I can show you a male, and I can show you a female that are doing the same thing. So mm -hmm. you know, when, you know, when I'm looking at, but I look at things on. I look at people and events and structures that we've created, not nature structures that we've created, as on a spectrum of indifference. Mm -hmm. When we become indifferent to each other and we lose a sense of equality, which is what I think has happened to the female, that, that throughout history that we've always had this less equality to the male. Mm -hmm. And that for me it's like when we see equality in each other, then we can work to each other's strengths and weaknesses and, um, you know, I worked in a male-orientated um, industry and I can tell you some of the some of the the guy well we're still good mates you know like we they were like brothers but we would work if we were working together we could work to my strengths to your weaknesses to your strengths to my weaknesses it was a very equality playground if you want to call mm -hmm. it that mm -hmm. there was other males I worked with which were condescending um, sexist um, pain in the asses basically. You know what I mean? Like they, they, their mission was to put you down every second that they could or to try to, um, you know, see how good they, their, their game was. So, so, there's, so there's this whole mix of different personalities and different mm -hmm. e even, you know, trauma responses and things like that that come into play in our relationship. So I look at it as... If you have anyone, male or female, on the indifferent spectrum that's up high, prepared to not give a crap about who you are, what you're doing, how that's impacting you, you end up with these relationships where the women are doing it all and the men are taking, or vice versa, you also get relationships. You know, I work very, I can see you work very much collectively, whereas I work very much individually. It's that you have other relationships where the women are taking it all and the men are getting nothing back. And as long as they're pretty, they're happy with that. You know what I mean? So, you know, whereas women generally are never happy with that and it eventually wears them down, as you said. So so that's what I see is that we've got this increased, well, I don't even think it's increased. I think it's all, like you said, it's always been there, this level of indifference towards what we're actually doing, who we're with, 
and how that's impacting each other. Mm. And until we get really honest about what we're doing to one another, then it, you know, crappy patterns and structures and institutions stay and stay in power. Correct. Well, see, it it all we have in you have I know you mentioned something about narcissism. Narcissism is a personality disorder. The key word is disorder. In order for you to establish disorder, you would first have to establish order to know what is out of order. Right. Mm-hmm. So the reason the, the reason why we can't find a solution and really understand what the problem is problem is is because we have not established the appropriate order to analyze human behavior. The proper order does not begin with social structure. It does not begin with rules. It begins with the foundation of life. And before you learn any language, before you learn anything about the world, you are being coded with DNA that has a lot of information in it. You are being coded with your sex chromosomes that have a lot of information in it. I have a background in cell and molecular biology. I went to school um, to study that with the intent to go into the medical field. I did not graduate, but I I left with about 18 hours left to actually get that, um, that degree. But I take that, a lot of that study that I've done and I've incorporated it into practically everything I do. So biology is the foundation of everything that I have come to the conclusion about. Um, There are five characteristics of life. And for a living organism, a living organism must maintain homeostasis. It must change and grow must reproduce, it must process energy, and it must respond to environmental and environmental stimuli and stimuli. That is biology 101, uh, the characteristics of life. So the, the correct order begins first with the biological program. So before we analyze anything or anybody, it has to begin with the biology. You have to consider Are we talking about a male or a female? Because there is a fundamental difference there. Then you have a second program. Uh, The second program is a psychological program, right? So once you establish what sex it is, right, and find out the characteristics and the natural behavioral patterns of the the biological program, Then you go to the program of the mind, which is the higher self, okay? And that's the psychology. The uh, original definition of psychology was the study of the soul originally, and then it transformed into the study of the mind. But the study of the soul, the program for the mind is a software. That software is philosophy. Before People see the world through the lens in which they see themselves. When you think about the dominant philosophies that govern the planet, where do these philosophies come from? They come out of the mind of somebody. The philosophies that have built the sociology, the social structures, because it's biology first, psychology second, then sociology third. The philosophies that have come out of somebody's mind that govern the entire planet, they come out of the mind of a man, not a woman. The Bible, all of the greatest philosophers, Plato, Socrates, Aristotle, Immanuel Kant, Marcus Aurelius, these are all men. They are not women. These have excluded the woman's existence. So these are men talking to men. So all of the social structures that you are in 
and the relationship dynamics and everything that you believe come out of the mind of a man. In order for it to come out of the mind of the male, it first has to come out of his nature. So the reason why there is a, where women were underneath men, because this is a world that was made for men. It was made by men for men. The planet wasn't made by men. Mother nature wasn't made by men. But these beliefs that you have, these social structures that you live in were made by men. And that's why you have James Brown's song. This is a man's world. You just in it. So, but this is a detriment to you. And little does the male know it's also a detriment to him. The perfect world that he created for himself because the oldest war on the planet was sexual conflict, the gender war, right? Because men need women. There is a nature in men that wants to conquer, dominate, and use women for their survival. They have to have women. So they created a world that would give them access to women, to give them power and control over women. So in order to make a better world, or before we get to the better world, and I go back to narcissism. So now we have a, now that we have established the appropriate order in which to analyze human behavior, and we see that this world that women are complaining about is a world that didn't even include or incorporate the woman's existence as human. It incorporated her as a commodity, something to use as a resource. So you go back to narcissism. That is a personality disorder. The reason why, and, and when you look at the studies, more men are affected with narcissism than women. Why is that? When you understand psychology, you understand that there's a part of the mind called the ego. The ego is responsible for reality testing. It is responsible for a person's personal identity. When you create a world that is anti-natural, that depends heavily on lies, delusion, you inflate the ego of the male because the male's ego is very fragile and when you put it out of order by putting it on top where there's no controls and everything is centered around him it artificially inflates it to an unnatural place that causes so much chaos right so this is a multi-layered issue that is not going to be rectified by the normal patterns of ideological adjustments, right? Well, if you just, if you just do it, you're not going to reason with men to change their behavior because the idea for a relationship to be better in the eyes of a woman, right? Which you are not a man. In the eyes of a woman is he just needs to do this. He needs to do that. He needs to listen more. But women don't understand that men have reduced capabilities of listening. They have reduced capabilities of empathy. They are heavily needy, very codependent. So trying to reason with a male in a world where he's getting all of his needs met for virtually nothing women are going to be talking to brick walls. There's never going to be a change with women just talking, right? So the question now has to become, do women want better relationships or do they want a better world? If you want a better relationship, the way you're going to get a better relationship is not trying to communicate with a man, not trying to reason with him to try to get him to change his behavior because even the greatest men male philosophers like the Plato's the Socrates the Aristotle 
Galileo said, you can't teach a man nothing. You can only help him find it within himself. Emmanuel Kant said, you can give a man everything he wants. And at that moment, everything is not everything. Napoleon Bonaparte says, men are moved by two lovers and two lovers only, fear and self-interest. That's it. So if men who are the greatest philosophers in the world, are saying this about men, it becomes very clear that women don't know men. And if you want a better relationship, if that's your goal, then you're going to have to accept men for who they are and just let them exist in your life and fulfill your own needs and pretend that you're getting what you want out of that man. Pretend. Pretend. <laughs> if you want a better world, yeah, yeah. Which we should all be striving for. You're going to have to put the male in his divine place. And the divine place is not equality. There is no such thing as equality. The male is not equal to the female and vice versa. There is a divine order. There is a cap that the male biologically reaches. He does not have the same wiring as the female. We know this. We're just not thinking about it. I mean... Venus is the planet of love, and Mars is the planet of war. Women are from Venus. Men are from Mars. Why would you put love and war in the same house? Mm. It's definitely a lot to think about. It's a lot to get. Mm -hmm. The way you're explaining things, it's a lot to try and get your head around because, you, I, you know, I get that even for me, I'm coming up against my own, you know, built-in structures of of my perception mm -hmm. but it's it's like that well I'll ask you the big question what, what do you think humanity and how do you see humanity needs to acknowledge and understand for us to evolve well we really need to learn the facts of life we humanity has become so delusional that they have lost their base. If you understand Maslow's hierarchy of uh, needs, at the base is physiological needs, eating, sleeping, it, um, sex, food, air. The body needs this. But when you become a full person that is fully integrated from your lower self and your higher self, at the top of that pyramid is self-actualization. At the place of self-actualization exists morality, lack of prejudice, acceptance of facts, right? We as humans no longer know the facts of life. We have no foundation. We do not include science into our assessments. We don't include human nature into our assessments. We do not accept the fact that we are animals first at our core. We don't accept that. We actually think that we are separate from this ecosystem and that we are above all other life forms when we actually came from those other life forms. We are too delusional as humans and we want to, we are ashamed of our shadow side so much that we have to lie to ourselves and pretend that it doesn't exist and that we're just these holy angels that are above reproach. We try to make it seem like it's only sunshine and no rain. And until we acknowledge the fact that we have a connection to this planet and we have a lower self that is animalistic, we will continue to ignore the facts of life. Men and women are both animals and we have an animal nature and that animal nature and the, the difference between us is rooted in sexual conflict. We have to begin to get a handle on the sciences. Right? Because the definition of science is the study of the natural 
in the physical world through observation and experiment, right? The study of the natural and the physical world or the behavior of that world through observation and experiment. We cannot ignore biology. We cannot ignore physics and chemistry. Those things are critical into the assessments of how this world works, right? Yeah. And and so if we want a better world, we need to know who the male is. It is critical because we live in a male dominated world. We are under patriarchal rule. It is critical for us to understand why patriarchy don't work. I think it's critical for us to understand ourselves, both male and female. Oh, yes. no, Because we've got all these people, regardless of the sexes, we've got all these people that have come through corrupt systems, you know what I mean, Mm -hmm. come through corrupt systems, traumatised, all that sort of stuff, and, and now they're acting that out. So there's this consistent acting out of what we refuse to acknowledge which is our shadow side our unresolved emotions our our low self-esteem you know like for every female you know and I'll stick my hand up for it as well for every female that has had a crappy relationship you got to come back to your own self-esteem is why we accepted that in the first place because we look we tolerate we you know we that's what that's why we're depleting our energy as you say why do they tolerate it though they tolerate it because of all of the suggestion, all of the social structures, all of the philosophies that tell women to tolerate it, right? So they're not just tolerating it because they want to, they're tolerating it because there has been a condition and centuries of getting it to this point. This didn't happen overnight, right? You have all of the media that tells women that they're not enough, right? Because beauty standards are not about men, they're about women, right? So watching the televisions, any of these patriarchal religions, any Abrahamic religion lets you know what your place is as a woman all over the globe. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter if you're looking at what's happening in Palestine. It doesn't matter if you go to Somalia. It doesn't matter if you go somewhere in Africa. In America, it's the same thing everywhere around the globe. So women can only really discover who they are through understanding who men are not. Through understanding the planet, because there has been a concerted effort to keep people away from studying nature. Women all over the globe have been kept out of education for years, Mm. right? And who has dominated the realms of science? Men. Men have been collecting all of the information. Charles Darwin was not a woman. That was a man who studied the male. He studied nature. And then what you find out when you start looking at these scientists, they basically practically just glossed over women and didn't even include them into the overall scheme. They were heavily biased in sciences, right? So these are facts that have gone into creating the world that we live in. The female, the feminine is the subconscious. The feminine is the impressionable. Women are the feminine counterpart. This is the reason why you can go to churches and it's full of women. It's full of women. They're not talking to the men. They're programming the women. If all of the the majority of the advertisements go towards women, all of the subconscious programming is for women. So there has been a concerted effort to keep women on the ground, never knowing the truth. So in order for us to fix the world, we have to understand it's not equal playing field. It's not men and women both because men are not going to change. In order to change this world, you have to stand on the truth. One thing about this, this is men are threatened by the truth because they know the truth. Women don't know the truth, but men do know. They know why they get with women. 
They know who they are and they are very afraid of women ever figuring it out because if women raise the bar and have self-esteem, the men will not be able to use these women and they will get upset. They will get angry. So the only reason that you have this dynamic right now is because women don't know their worth. And they, there has been a concerted effort to keep women away from ever learning their worth. If it's too hard, men are not going to make it. You can't create a balance where men and women are equal because men and women are literally on two opposite ends of the spectrum. If you want to bring two opposite ends of the spectrum together to a, a middle ground, guess what? You're going to end up pulling one up and bringing one down. You're going to bring one from the left, which is at the bottom. You're going to pull that one up. And the one that's all the way at the right, you're going to pull that one down. That is the only way. And guess where women are? Women are at the far right. So you have to bring women all the way down. That's not going to work to create a better world. Yeah. Well, it's, you know, you, you listen to any of the high power women that are in position that they'll tell you, you can sit in a boardroom and suggest an idea that's to be discussed, purpose of the meeting, and it's overshadowed and a male can say it five minutes later and it's celebrated like this great idea that has just been presented and they all talk about that, you know, whether it's in politics or, or um, you know, any sort of structure. So they're all the things that, you know, where I'm hoping that we evolve out of it by understanding ourselves. You're not giving me a lot of hope here. <laughs> no, the male, the male for 200,000 years, the male has not evolved beyond ego. He can't, he's incapable of doing it. I wanted, I have a great respect for some transgenders out here for the transgender experience. And I'll tell you why. The transgender experience presents a dynamic that is very interesting. A person who lives their life as one through the eyes and body of one sex and then transforms and lives their lives as another sex. This is critical because they have to be passable. So there was a scientist by the name of Ben Barr. She lived her life as a female for like maybe 30 years or so, 40 years maybe. And she would always do excellent work, research papers and everything. When she did it under the identity of a woman, she never got praised for her work. She transitioned into a man. She's uh, deceased now, but Ben Barr, she became Ben Barr. She started writing. She worked for the same place. New people came in, never knew that she was trans and that those previous works also belonged to her. But no. as a man, as a man, those men was like, oh, yeah, your work is so much better than your sister's work. This ain't never going to stop. You're never going to get the male to do what you think he should do to be right because the male's biological goal his ultimate goal is sex to pass his genes along. that's his ultimate biological goal power domination and sex that's it everything else is the artificial world that is opposite of the biology money is not biological building a building is not biological playing a sports game that's not biological what is biological is his need to get access to women. And in these systems, he has been given access to women by giving him more pay, which was giving him more power over resources that force women to approach him. So he has access through there. He has access through his, through the legal system, 
practically given him a slap on the wrist for his violence, right? Yeah. So, so what's the male biological response to their offsprings? Well, most of them, biolo- biologically, they're designed to just leave them, produce as many as they can, and leave them with the parent, leave them with the mother, right? That's the reason why women do all the work. And fatherhood is just like, oh, he's there. He's he's having fun. It's The bar is so low because biologically men are incapable of doing the job of a woman. And so women have bought into these monogamous nuclear family setups and they cut her off from her true support system, which was other women, true support system, which was a community. And they sold women on a delusion while the men were studying biology, physics and all of this. And women were forced to be in the house while they was getting all of this information. They sold you on Romeo and Juliet. They sold you on Disney. You believe you're looking for a knight in shining armor, which is totally opposite of what men actually are. But they sold it to you so it makes it easier. So you start to you draw the male to you instead of him trying to fight for you instead of him trying to compete for you you and your delusions draw him to you you actually go seek it out because the nature of the female is actually to reject the male not to go towards him right not to try to stay with him not to make excuses for abuse and all of that women are totally out of nature they're out of alignment with their with their makeup Right? And so if we want a better world, we're going to have to do this the way the, the divine creator created it. And she did not create monogamous relationships that lasted for 40, 50 years with men and women. She didn't create that. She also didn't allow the female to be in a male pecking order. Domination and aggression is a male pecking order. That's what, that's the environment men need to be in and women don't need to be in it. Yeah, you're not going to get, yeah, you're not going to get rid of male aggression. You're not going to get rid of male entitlement. They will never be women. And women have to understand what it means to be a woman and what it means to be a man. Yeah. Well, it's, it's definitely a lot to unpack and, and think about because you know, I can I can feel myself wanting to push back on some of what you're saying, but I'm running it through filters of having re. I've had some really good men around me. I've had some complete dead shit assholes as well. You know what I mean? That like, you know, but I've had some really strong, nurturing, supportive, protective men around me as well. And so it's, it's this, um, but I also, you know, and I, a a few of them have actually said, you know, uh, men can't help themselves. They're going to put women down because, you know, we do feel inferior, you know, like, so they're very aware of themselves and very honest and, and all the rest of it. So it's, it's, yeah, it's a, it's a lot to try and take in and think about what you're actually saying the fundamentals I take from what I understand, and that's running it through my filter, which I completely understand, is that mm-hmm. that for us as females, if we're looking at a man, see the reality of him. Don't don't do the think you're going to do the renovation job because we're just being told they're not very good at, at um, learning, um, and be very honest about what you're actually feeling and experiencing in that relationship and make decisions from that, not the illusion of what you think you can create, which... Correct. Yeah, so that's that's my take home from it, which which is also, you know, is also something that I'm an advocate for because a lot of people get into relationships because they want the wedding. Mm -hmm. They want to not be seen as single, Mm -hmm. you know what I mean? Right. Right. Yeah, So and that can work on both sides and then... They create the illusion. And a lot of women do look at men as renovation jobs. Yes. Yeah. And they get that. Yeah, they get that because they think it says something about their power if they can change this man. But you are 
playing a losing game, you're never going to win at that game because the way I like to the way I like to make it appear, I always describe it like this. This is a power cord. Mm -hmm. This is the male end. This is a current that keeps moving until it doesn't move anymore. This is a phone. This is the female end. The male end will never transform into a phone. He, this will never, ever be able to do the job of the phone, ever. I don't care how much you pray. I don't care how, what you do, it will never do this. And this is what it looks like for a woman to be in a relationship with a man. There is no equality. This is why this only takes out the garbage when you tell it to. And this is why you're doing all of the work. Yeah. Because that's the way it's naturally designed on all planes. It doesn't matter if you're a woman, a phone, a, a, a dog, a cat, a camera. This is the setup. So either women are going to be going to understand that this is who men are and accept them for that. If you don't like that, then you need to find another way to live. But this will never be a phone ever. Yeah. Interesting. Mm -hmm. All right. Well, I think it's time for Flip the Book. So would you like book one, two, or three? I'm going to go with book two. Book two. Okay. That's Spirituality, Evolution, and Awakened Consciousness. So you've got one to 188 pages to That's pick from. 97. 97. Okay. So you have, you got seven paragraphs to pick from. Okay. Paragraph five. Paragraph five. Okay, so this is under the heading of karma. Okay. And it says, we are responsible for the following, the purpose, the reason why we do what we do, the goal we wish to achieve, and the result we strive for. Actually, I'm just going to read the next three out, two out, sorry, because it's all relevant. These are dot points, so it goes in, we are responsible for the following, the purpose the reason why we do what we do and the goal we wish to achieve and the result we strive for, very much what you're talking about, the intent, the energy we want to put in, in motion, the stepping stones to what we mean to do, whether we achieve it or not, yeah. how we think and, and want things to play out, what we believe will provide us with what we want to happen, what we are prepared to forsake in our attempt to achieve our desires. And then the next dot point is the consequences, the wake of our actions, that which follows sequenced ramifications. It's quite fitting for you, actually. Yes, I know <laughs> that was my higher self that chose that. <laughs> For very sure. much so yes. so how do you feel about purpose intent and consequences correct okay so we are all here for a purpose and a lot of times when we get here we forget that purpose we get sucked into this delusion of a world and we lose our bearings we lose our mind a mind is a terrible thing in ways which is critical to be able to analyze and put the puzzle pieces together, pick up the breadcrumbs that have been left on the trail to piece it together, what you're actually here to do, right? And when you find what you're here to do, when you put, which is of the higher self, and you put that as the leader, there is inspiration that pulls you towards doing that. And you'll have a lot of energy to actually put that into motion. And you are going to have to live in purpose and, and, and have strong intent for why you're doing what you're doing to manifest what it is that you want. And when you live for who you truly are, manifestation is easy, right? It's going against the true self. It's going against the purpose that actually makes one's life hard. Because when you live from here, you remove all fear. Fear does not exist in this state. Yeah, which is the consequence of freedom, isn't it? 
Yes. Yeah. I want to thank you for being part of the show. I've enjoyed the conversation. Thank you so much for having me. I have too.